Welcome to another beautiful episode of Crying is a Strike Conversation, a beautiful program where we invite innovators, uh, stakeholders, and influencers in the blockchain, crypto, and fintech ecosystem to come add their view and state of the ecosystem. So today we'll be talking about finance infrastructure through blockchain based organization. And I have with me uh, an expert in the energy sector, is Alasta Katnes. Alasta, you're welcome to Crying is a Strike. Yeah, hey, nice to see you, Lee. So uh, I'm phoning Lee today from over in California, everybody. So San Diego. Yeah, how is it? So today? it's a pretty sunny day, about 24 degrees. Wow, yeah, about 24 good. degrees centigrade. That's great. That's good. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Uh, Alaska is the CEO of uh, ZN Energy uh, Blockchain. So I'm also a person for Liberation uh, Party. So it's our pleasure to have you today. Yeah, thank you, Lee. Yeah. Pleasure to be here. Okay, before we move to the topic of the day, would like to get a brief about yourself, Alastair, about yourself and your background. So I've set Zion Energy up uh, just over five years ago. So initially, we were a company involved in government tenders and information, like an information intelligence business. We were providing information on oil contracts and oil information, and uh, we eventually won some contracts. So we actually became a small oil operator and we started acquiring interest in oil projects in the Midwest. And from there, we were involved in the technology change in the energy industry, and we got involved in the blockchain. So our company now tokenizes uh, energy assets on the blockchain. So we're on the cusp of... Uh, um, and uh, developing this technology. Yeah. Or utilizing this technology, <clears throat> should I say. <laughs> yeah. So uh, looking at what is uh, going on, you know, we've seen what blockchain has brought on board. So what would you say about asset parts of blockchain token? So, so what we're doing here is we're, t we're basically taking an uh, oil project. So in Nigeria, oil is your number one commodity, number one generator of income of the country. But the problem with an oil project, and it'll be the same in Nigeria as here, is with a project currently, when people invest in the infrastructure and the capital structure, the money is locked into the life cycle of the project. So even though you've invested this money to, say, develop an oil project, the ones we're doing in America, but if you were uh, investing in a big uh, oil project in Nigeria, the problem is that the money's locked into the life cycle of the project. So some of these projects in Nigeria are massive multi-billion dollar projects or multi-million dollar projects, and it's still the same problem as the problem we deal with here. The money's locked into the life cycle of the project so essentially if you invested money into this project you would get distributions based on what the oil produces but if you have an interest in this project and you want to sell that interest you can't actually sell it because the money's locked into the project if you think about it like that lee so what we're able to do under tokenization is we actually take the entire energy oil producing asset or oil project and we tokenize it and rather than it be broken down in percentages, it's now in, and we'll just call it, say, Nigeria Oil Token 1. It's the name of the project. So Nigeria Oil Token 1 is set up. Now, this token provides you distributions as it produces oil. So what's actually happening is every, every day or every quarter, as they're producing oil, depending on what your ownership of this oil project is, and you'll have the big oil operators, the Nigerian government, but you'll have investment companies owning part of these projects. And they'll be getting distributions based on how much oil is produced on a monthly, quarterly basis. But if they ever want to sell that interest, right now it's actually quite difficult because essentially the money's locked into the life cycle of the project. So what we're looking to do is two things. One, by tokenizing the project and having an ATS, it means this asset that you've invested into, and whether you call it a coin or a token, this coin or token is going to give you distribution. So every quarter, this coin will be giving you 
distributions back. And the way we've got it set up, the distributions will be either in Bitcoin, Ethereum, US dollars or euros. So you'll invest into this oil coin or wind token, or we're calling them tokens rather than coins. But if you invest into them, you hold on to this token, this asset you've invested in. It's giving you distributions on a quarterly basis. But what's happening that's new is now you'll be able to sell your percentage on an ATS, alternative trading system. So when you think of tokenization, we're unlocking the liquidity. And then what will happen as well is right now the barriers to entry for people like you and I to own part of an oil project in Nigeria is quite difficult, you know? It makes all this money, but who actually owns part of the project? Not Nobody, Lee. But under tokenization, if they tokenize an oil project in Nigeria, then anyone who lives in Nigeria could actually buy these tokens and own part of this oil project through tokenization. And every quarter or every month, as it produces oil, you get distributions. Okay, and I'll you think that. of a place like Nigeria, that's what's actually happening. I'll ask that. Uh, you've been able to talk about this uh, from investor point of view, which is a very nice uh, uh, starting point when it comes to tokenization of energy sector. Uh, look, let's look at uh, the industry itself. How, how is it going to be, uh, how is tokenization going to play a role in the energy industry itself? So if you think about the, the role it's about to play, it's, it's going to completely change the whole thing. You know, the way the energy industry sector is operating right now. Now, the way we produce energy is always improving. That doesn't change. The way we use energy, that's always improving. It doesn't change. But what you're changing is by changing the capital structure and making everything fluid, then suddenly the money for all these multi-billion dollar projects are no longer locked in the life cycle of the project. But also the man in the street or the room in the street, right, the person in the street can come in and invest in these projects as well. So basically two things are happening is you're opening up a new sort of window of essentially investors through Bitcoin tokens, all that to essentially invest into an industry sector as it gets tokenized. And they will actually own more and more of this and get the distributions back and it'll recycle it. And what will actually happen is through the blockchain and tokenization, we're going to start to drive the price of energy down, not up. So right now we're all thinking, yes, it's, you know, it's going to hit $70 a barrel. You know, the Nigerian economy is just coming out of recession. It's going to be good because the oil price is high. Everything's going to be good. But really, in going forward, as, as the renewable energy increases, what we'll see is a downward trend. <clears throat> in terms of the cost of energy. And I think what's going to happen is that eventually the price of energy, and I think this is our model and what we're trying to do, will eventually become as close to free as possible. Uh, uh, Alastair, uh, we, we've seen uh, the scenarios uh, where most nations, uh, they adopt a blockchain, are not been, uh, most of them are not comfortable with uh, cryptocurrency. We had uh, some issues in Nigeria, some other parts of the place. So what would you say, I know uh, tokenization, uh, tokenizing the energy sector is a very good one. What are the challenges like when it comes to regulations? So uh, you look at the rate, so what we are doing is, so these, the difference between asset-backed tokens and cryptocurrencies is, it, the asset-backed tokens are more regulated in terms of these ERC-20 tokens, you know, when they actually go here, the, it goes through a transfer agent. So the transfer agent knows who owns what tokens. And even though you've got a wallet address, the transfer agent will know your wallet address. So if you ever lose your wallet, then you're not going to lose your tokens or investment under this new mechanism on the blockchain. So what it's going to do is, it's going to be more tightly regulated in terms of cryptocurrencies because it's going to go through government regulation and, you know, different KYCs, whereby Bitcoin essentially is anonymous, you know. So this is not anonymous and through within government control. So if you think this is what's going to happen is it's going to allow places like Nigeria and Russia and these other areas whereby in, in the world that they've essentially 
making it illegal to have cryptocurrency, China as well, because they can't control it in the same way as a lot of Western countries. But under asset-backed tokenization and tokens, it's going to be more regulated. So you'll find more of the banks will be involved and they'll end up running a lot of this stuff. And what it does is it allows the technology to be adopted by the governments easier. Now, all these people are going to still invest in Bitcoin because Bitcoin is the, the one that created the blockchain and Bitcoin's become its own commodity itself. But if you're thinking about the technology and what the, you know, because Bitcoin was essentially running on a blockchain and then the Ethereum blockchain came on, then all these different things are starting to come out from that. And there's more and more blockchains and more and more developments in technology that essentially the whole world is about to go onto the blockchain and the next 15 years, it'll just be an unbelievable difference from what it is now in terms of technology uh, fast forward jump, you know? Thank you very that much. Is it is a very nice uh, topic, an interesting topic. Uh, I know we could keep uh, discussing it. Uh, people will stay here for very longer. So uh, before we draw the curtain on today's episode of Coin is a Strike Interview Session, uh, Alasta, I would like to get your closing remark. So I think it's like the one thing that we are doing, I think a lot of people are going to be interested in is this for renewable energy. So we're looking to tokenize and make tokens for renewable energy and speed up the transition in energy from essentially fossil fuels to renewable energy. Because the way I see it is if we can create enough energy on mass at less than nine dollars a barrel, that essentially puts the oil and gas business. You know, we're going to move out of the fossil fuels and move into green energy, not because we're running out of fossil fuels, is because we're essentially creating so much green energy at such a low price that we won't basically need it for our major energy source. But we'll always produce oil and gas because we need it for product, for plastics and these things. It's just what we need in terms of energy at the home. That's what's going to change things. So what I see the blockchain and tokenization doing is it's going to speed up this transition in energy by unlocking the capital structures and essentially taking the distributions from oil and gas, putting it in to renewable energy and essentially funding renewable energy projects at a mass level. And that's what the blockchain and tokenization is about to do. So people, I think it's going to be a hundred years for us to do this big, you know, push fast forward, but realistically it can be done a lot quicker and not just from developing the product, but actually the capital structures, the blockchain and tokenization underneath. And that's what's so interesting and what's so exciting about what this technology's done. And you were just talking about this in one industry sector, Lee. You know, you've got every industry sector in the world. Every industry sector is going to change from this technology. And I'm only working on one piece of it. And uh, that's what keeps me up at night, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It has really been an amazing time out with you, Alasta Kidness, who is the CEO of Zen Energy. Thank you very much for joining us today. Okay, no problem. Thanks for everybody it's in Nigeria. It's a pleasure. So